Asalaamu Alaikum everyone and welcome to the Safiri's live show. Um, my name is Muhammad Zee, once again and we're joined by Pip. Asalaamu Alaikum Pip. Alaikum Salaam. You're, you're right Pip, welcome back. It's, I'm so happy to see you again, it's been so long. Hmm. Oh Pip, Pip, you, you do know that we are live. And come on, yeah, everyone's watching us. Well, I'm not interested. How, how comes, Pip? I'm not in a good mood. Oh. I'm upset. Oh, how comes you're upset, Pip? Hmm. Well, I'm upset with myself. Oh, you're upset with yourself? Yes. So you're not upset with me or you guys at home? No, not at all. So, so how comes you're upset with yourself, Pip? Well, you see, yeah. Hmm. Sometimes, uh huh. I can be very naughty. Oh, okay. That's not good. Sometimes, yeah. I can be even unfriendly. <gasps> oh, oh, to other people. That's right. What, what do you mean, Pip? Well, you see, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. I get jealous. Oh. When other people have things yeah. that I don't. But, but sometimes, like for example, my friend got a really, really cool camera for his birthday and it's so much nicer than mine. And I spent like two years saving up for my camera and I was a bit upset because I really wanted a camera like that too. So, so what I did was I made dua that I could get just a, ca a camera that's even better than his. Is that what you mean? Kind of. Yeah. But I don't want a camera. Okay. So, I just want what everyone else has. I, okay. Though that's, that's, that's normal, right, Pip? Is it? Well, yeah. It's, you always want something that's better than what you already have. So... Yeah. If I wanted to be... I don't know. Yeah. More clever. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? No, of course not. That's a great thing. But what if it means yeah. I don't want you to be clever? Oh, no. So, so, for example, if your friend had toys... Yes. ...and you wanted the same toy, would you wish bad for your friend because he had that toy? Is, hmm. is that what you mean? Sometimes, yes. Oh, no, Pip. That's not nice. See, see, when it comes to being clever, because Allah is all wise, so we should all try to be really, really clever because we want to become more and more wise. I see. But when it comes to things like, like when your friends have gifts and really nice toys, you shouldn't wish bad upon them. We could ask for toys as well, but we shouldn't wish that they have bad things or that their toys would break. Hmm. I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So Ramadan yeah. is a time for thinking about others? Well, yeah, exactly. And did you know that during the holy month of Ramadan, the gates of heaven are open and the gates of hell are closed. And really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if you've ever done anything bad, then you can ask Allah for forgiveness. Do you think that he will forgive you? Hmm. Depends how bad I've been. Mm. Do you think that there is something in the whole wild world that you could have done that Allah is not able to forgive you? Well, I suppose they say mm -hmm. He is the most merciful. Ah, that's very true. Can I quiz you, Pip? Hmm. Do you know what, what Allah's name is that, that explains that He's very, very merciful? Oh no, this is one of the times I wish I was cleverer. <laughs> <laughs> Pip, I want to tell you something. Please. One of Allah's name is Al Ghafur. Al Ghafur. Yeah, Al Ghafur. Do you guys want to say at home too? Al Ghafur. And it means the great forgiver. It means someone who forgives so so often, because that's exactly what Allah does. And it's even mentioned in the Quran. Can you guess how many times? How many? Have a guess. A wild guess. Five. Oh, okay. Five is a good number. I like five, but it's not five. It's more than five. Mm, five 
<laughs> oh, okay. That's that's a lot of uh, same words. <laughs> um, fifty. Okay. Oh, fifty is very close. It's mentioned in the Quran seventy times. Wow. Yeah. How amazing. That is amazing. So, do you think that Allah will be able to forgive you if you ask for forgiveness? Hmm. I think so. Yeah. Maybe. Do you know, it reminds me of a story. Please, so, I love stories. Okay, so once there were a group of people that came to Imam Ali alayhi salam and they were like, we want a dua, a supplication. We want to ask Allah to give us things like, uh, for example, you know how you wanted to be clever? Yes. So they wanted uh, things like kids. Some people would want to have kids. Some, Why? Well, uh, so that they can carry on their generation. Oh. It's nice having kids though, isn't it, Pip? More Pips! More Pips, yeah! Can you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> imagine, the, imagine there were like tens and thousands of more Pips. Oh my gosh, that's a little scary! <laughs> and, and some people wished for their business to grow. So, for example, if you're a farmer, you would pray for rain because then your crops will increase. I see! And if you were a businessman, a salesperson, you would wish for more customers. So they went to Imam Ali Islam and said, what's the best dua I can ask Allah to give me all these successes? And what you, was that? Do you know what Imam Ali Islam said? No. He said to do istighfar. Do istighfar? You, yeah. Do you know what that is, Pip? I think so. Oh, go on, have a go. Is that when you look far ahead? <laughs> When you look far, no. It's really far! <laughs> no. <laughs> it's the far, it's not when you look far ahead. Oh. But it does, it does sound like you could. Okay. Because it's got the word far in it. So what does it mean? Istighfar is when you ask for forgiveness. Oh. Yeah. Do you know how we can ask for forgiveness? How? Well, there are many ways. But I, the most important way is for you to feel bad for what you have done. I see. Yeah. So if you feel bad and you have that feeling of remorse and you're like, oh, I wish I didn't do that. And in your head you're thinking, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Then you've asked for forgiveness. I think that all the time. Really? Yes. Oh, so you have that asking for forgiveness. You have that istighfar in your heart. I but think so, yes. Do you know what's even better? What? To actually say it verbally. Oh. Yeah. Do you know what we can say in Arabic? Please, tell me. Okay, you can say Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Yes, exactly. Well done, wow. Pip. Yeah. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> That's so good. And, but do you think that they were happy with this dua? Because everyone knows you can say Astaghfirullah. So they asked Imam Ali Islam, what do you mean? Is that the best dua you can give? So do you know what Imam Ali Islam replied with? Now, what did he say? He quoted the Holy Quran. Subhanallah. Yeah, because Imam Ali is super clever. So, should I tell you what he said? Please. Imam Ali Islam said, Ask forgiveness of your Lord. Surely he is the most forgiving. He will send down upon you the cloud, pouring down lots of rain, and help you with wealth and sons, and make you make for gardens and make for you rivers oh, wow how amazing subhanallah subhanallah indeed do you know what i think pip please i think that if you ask for forgiveness i don't think allah will only reward you here and give you lots of mini pips and give you good business i think he will give you something even better can you guess what it is no what would that be i think it's something that lasts a lot longer than it would in this world. So definitely not an ice cream. Not an ice cream. Ice cream melts really fast. That's true. <laughs> Have mm. another guess, Pip. Something that lasts really, really long. Yeah. Hmm. Um, life itself. Oh, life lasts very long, but it only lasts about, what, on average, 50 to 80 years. True. Yeah. Is it something that you can think of that lasts even longer? Hmm. Akira. Akira? Ah, very good guess. What does that mean? Is that 
I heard it's something to do yeah. with the life after life. Yeah. How did you find out? How did you find out about that, Pip? Well, you see. Yeah. I was talking to an elder person. Uh huh. And they were telling me. Yeah. I have to think about my Akira. Ah, because you know. Yes. You know that time where we met at the at the majalis where Uncle invited us? Yes. Yeah, the Sheikh was talking about the Akhira too. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Ah. So this is all related? Yeah, exactly. We talk about the Akhira all the time. I feel clever now. <laughs> oh, alhamdulillah. And you know, there are so many other names of Allah that explains His beautiful bounties. Subhanallah! I know! What are those other names? Well, before I tell you, I think we should watch an episode of Captain News. Oh, I love Captain News! Yeah? Okay, over to you, Captain News. 1024, 1025, 1026. <laughs> Welcome to Captain News. Do I have news for you? In the news this week, there has been a curious incident of a remote control that refused to turn channels when it was pointed at the television. Rafiq, the remote, had this to say about going on strike. I don't like the way I am used to flick through channels as if I don't have any feelings and then I get flung around on the sofa or fall off the coffee table and I just have to sit there until someone comes and finds me. This particular remote control was having trouble accepting that he is just that, a remote control and not a magic wand, which is really what he wants to be. I wish I was a magic wand, then I would do tricks to keep people entertained and there will be no need to watch TV. <laughs> Rafiq did finally get back to his original job, but only after he was kept nice and safe on the armrests of the sofa. Have you ever heard of fishers who enjoys camping? Well, Farha and her friends decide to go camping in the waterfront. They pack their bags and included some tasty food and off they went. Farha felt like a fish out of water, <laughs> probably because she was and her friends too. Farha and Farzana were having a great time in their little tent, bobbing up and down on the water, when all of a sudden there was a loud snapping sound, like large teeth clacking together. Then. Farha and Farzana heard a rumbling sound. Oh dear, oh dear, it was Ali the alligator! Spying on the two frightened fish, crawling from his mouth and waiting for a tasty meal to eat. But the fishes weren't having it, certainly not. Instead, they decided to leave their little tent and dip back into the river, but not before they had trapped Ali the alligator in the tent. You see, these two clever fishers left some food in the tent before they went back into the river and it smelled delicious. Ali the alligator, having no idea that it was a trap, jumped into the tent and got himself into such a mess that there was no way out. Ali was going nowhere fast. Meanwhile, Farha and Farzana the fishes were enjoying an underwater adventure through the coral reefs. A report has just come in about some scary peas, frightening all the other things in the kitchen. We have been told that there was a glowing box on the kitchen windowsill, which was slowly lightening up. Lo and behold, out popped a pea with bat wings. Ooh, frightening. With black lips, the pea swooped down while still 
trying to light up a firecracker. The wooden spoon ran away with the dishes, and the cups tried to leave the dish rack, and the towels just curled up and hoped that the scary pea wouldn't see them. After all of the chaos, our reporter had a chance to speak to this pea, and this is what Barvez had to say. Oh dear, I wasn't meant to scare them. I wanted to put on a magic show and entertain everyone. Um, hello, anyone there? I'm back to normal now. Don't be scared anymore. <laughs> I think Barvez needs to go back to his day job. After all, he's just a pea in a pod. And that's all we've got for you today. Have a beautiful day! <laughs> oh, these stories are so silly. Did you see the peas? They're so funny, <laughs> so silly, a bit like me. <laughs> really, really, Pip. Are you that silly as well? I can be. Yeah. But sometimes uh -huh. I do mean things as well. Oh, oh, what kind of things? Oh, I don't know if I should tell you. I might give you ideas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, no. I will not do anything silly, I promise. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. There was this one time uh -huh. I locked my friend in my garden shed. What? Really? Yeah. It was the worst thing that had happened to him. Oh my god, you locked your friend in your garden shed. Well, you see, yeah. the problem was, yeah. he was annoying me. Okay, okay. I wanted to play with my toys, yeah. and he yeah. wanted to play with them too. Yeah. And like I said, I don't like sharing. So you thought the best thing to do was lock him up? Well, <laughs> I thought to myself that way, yeah. he won't bother me anymore, will he? So did he stop bothering you in the shed? Kind of. Yeah. But then it was disturbing me. Why? Because I kept hearing him shouting in the background. <laughs> so I couldn't role play with my toys. Oh, but Pip. Yes? Did you not feel bad? Only for my toys. <laughs> because like I said, I couldn't play my game. Pip. Yes? That's, that's not a nice thing to do at all. Really? Yeah, because... I want you to imagine, if you were your friend, what's your friend's name? I've forgotten. You, you even forgot his name. So He was locked in the shed a long time. Oh, wow. You've, so, so, your friend? Yes. You don't value him because, one, you forgot his name. Two, you don't like sharing. And three, your way of dealing with things with him is to lock him up in your shed. Well. How would you feel if you were that friend? So imagine, imagine if I was trying to play with you and, and like if I brought my toy car in yes, and we were trying to like, you know, just do a little race yes, and I was like, I want to race myself yes, and, and you wanted to play with me. Yes. So I decided to lock you up in a, in a shed. <gasps> How would you feel? I would feel pretty upset. And do you think it would be an okay thing to do on my behalf? Not really. Do you think, do you think it'll be funny? Mm. No, no, I don't think no. so either, Pip. Maybe a little. A little? A little funny? Only, no, actually, no, no. it's not funny, no. is it? No, it wouldn't. No. So, mm. so Pip, yes. can I ask you something? Yes. This friend of yours. Yes. Um, at what point did you let him out the shed? Well, you see, yeah. I let him out the shed yeah. when I realised yeah. I needed somebody else to play the other toy. <laughs> so, so first you locked him up because you didn't want him to play. Yes. And then you let him out because you got bored and lonely. Sort of, yes. Oh, Pip, that's not cool. Come on, Pip. Well, as I said, I got problems. <laughs> Pip, yes. we all have problems. True. But you know what? Yes. I, I think the right thing to do is to ask for forgiveness. But I'm going to ask you, who should you ask for forgiveness for? Mm. Mm -hmm. For the toys? Okay, for the toys. Why would you ask for forgiveness for the toys? Because 
I think they got bored of me too. <laughs> okay. Um, so but maybe. Be besides the toys, who maybe, else would you ask forgiveness for? Maybe. Yeah. God. Okay. Okay. That's very nice. Why? Because God is all forgiving. Yes. Yes. But if you have upset your friend, yes. Do you think Allah will just let it slide and forgive you? Hmm. Mm. I don't think so. No. Because Allah loves all His creation. Exactly. Yeah, that's so right. Well done, Pip. So, it, so do you have an idea of who you should ask for forgiveness from? Should it be my friend? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And once you've asked your friend for forgiveness, yes. Do you think Allah will forgive you? I think so. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, do you know why? Why? Should I teach you more names of Allah? Please. Okay. So and maybe yeah. you can teach me the name of my friend so I can ask his forgiveness. Oh, you know what? Maybe you should ask your mom because mothers are so kind that, for example, my mother, she even remembers the names of my friends because she cares about people so much. Really? Yeah. Okay. That's what I'll do. Yeah. But first, yeah. tell me the story. Okay, okay, so I've got another question for you. Okay. So in our daily lives, we recite this one phrase every single day. It's in our salah. We say it before we eat our food. We say it before going to sleep. Uh, we say it before doing wudu. Uh, and it's got two special words in it. And it starts with a B. Can you guess what it is? B. Yeah. B. And we say it all the time. All the time. And begins with a B. It begins with a B. Well. Yeah. If it's my house. Yeah. And it's said all the time. Yes. And it begins with a B. Yeah. You big baby! <laughs> Is that it? Um, not quite, Pip. Oh. Uh, in what context do you say you big baby? No, that's what my mum tells me. Oh, really? When I'm being naughty. Okay, okay, okay. No, think, think of another word that hmm. begins with B that you say when you feel good oh. or when you want to gain closer to Allah. Oh! Uh, yeah. Okay, I think I know. Uh -huh. I think I know. Yeah. Um, bis. Yes. Mil. Uh-huh. La. Uh-huh. <laughs> Bismillah. Bismillah. Is that it? Yeah, well, it's it's part of it. There's more? Yeah. You say Bismillah, Rahman. Mirrahim. Exactly. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Bismillah, Rahman, Mirrahim. Yeah. Well done, Pip. But do you know what the two special words are in that phrase? No, what are they? It's the ones that you forgot. Rahman and Rahim. Oh. So, Ar-Rahman means the beneficent or the most gracious. And Ar-Rahim means the most, most merciful. Wow. Yeah. And, and they explain the qualities of Allah. And every single day, we say that Allah is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. I see. Yeah. And, wow. and you know what the Sheikh told me? So Ar Rahman is like it's like God is so kind and he benefits everyone and and it's like he's got so much goodness and he gives his mercy to the whole of mankind. And then Ar Rahim is super special because that's a special kind of mercy where he, he acts in extreme kindness. So he's even more kind than he's fair. So sometimes our mothers, like for example, my mom, she, if, if I'm playing with toys uh, with my little sister, yes. then she might say, oh, you have to divide the toys in 50-50. Because that's 50 -50? fair, right? 50-50, yeah. You have a hundred toys? <laughs> no, I mean um, half and half. So oh. sharing means I have the same amount as my sister. So do you chop your toys up? <laughs> no, Pip. We, uh, we share them out depending on who wants which oh, toys. Oh, so if I have a football yeah. and I have a book, uh -huh. maybe I give the book to my friend yeah. while I play with the football. Yeah, exactly. Sharing. Sharing. Okay. Sharing. 
and and then uh, if she was to be extremely kind, then she would she would let she would even buy even more toys so that we could both have even more. And and our mothers are always extremely kind, but imagine Allah, He's extremely extremely kind to the ones He loves. Can you guess who He loves the most? Who's that? The people who are faithful. Faithful? Yeah. What does faithful mean? It means someone that believes in Him and wants to become a good person. Wow. Yeah. Math, Allah yeah. is truly kind. Yeah. Because He's always giving us chances and to ask Him for forgiveness. Yeah. And I, this is just so amazing. Yeah, exactly. I feel like I'm getting closer already. Ah, oh, do you know another way of getting closer to Allah? How? Is through learning from the Imams because we want to become just like them. So, can I learn some about the Imams? Of course, but do you know what? We have little Sheikh and big Sheikh that can teach us more about the Imams. How really? about that? Can, yeah. Wow. Should we join the Super Sheikhs? Please, I love the Super Sheikhs. Awesome. Over to you, Super Sheikhs. Assalamualaikum dear children and welcome to Super Sheikhs. I'm Big Sheikh Hassan. And I'm Little Sheikh Hussein. First of all, we'd like to thank you so much for sending in your question. Dear Super Sheikhs, in school we're learning about Islam. How many Imams are there and who are they? We have Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein and nine other Imams. Exactly. Which, as in first of all, we have to know what an Imam is. An Imam is the successor of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. The first Imam was Imam Ali, who was the cousin of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. He was also, in fact, married to Prophet Muhammad's daughter called Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Fatima al-Zahra. So Fatima al-Zahra and Imam Ali alayhi salam, both of them, they had children. They had two sons. They were named Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. Just like our names, isn't it? Yeah. Right, and we're brothers as well. <laughs> right, so the first Imam, as in the first child they had, was Imam Hassan, alayhi salam. He was the second Imam, right? Yes. Imam Hussein was number? Three. He was Imam number three. Then we have nine other Imams, which are all um, from the family tree of Imam? Ali. Imam Ali, yes, but they came from Imam Hussein's family, right? Yeah. Is that correct? His name is Imam Mahdi, son of Imam Hassan al Askari, which is number 11. Right. Imam Mahdi, he is the living Imam, right? Yes. We've said that many times now so far. But Imam Mahdi, he will come out, inshallah, soon. We don't know when, but inshallah, we'll be waiting for his return. Do we want to be followers of Imam Mahdi? Yes. Do we have to be followers of Imam Mahdi? If you're Muslim, yes. If you're Muslim and you accept the Imamat, which are the successors of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you would have to try at least to become a follower of Imam Mahdi. We also have learned about people who are called the 313, the 313. Who are they? They are... 313 ultimate believers. Ultimate believers, not just believers, ultimate believers, right? They are the elite followers of Imam Mahdi, right? And um, they will be like the generals of the followers. They will be the leaders of the followers of Imam Mahdi, right? The sad thing is, unfortunately, in this world, we have around 2.7 billion Muslims, but we don't have 313 good enough Muslims, right? The only thing is, we have to try to become those 313, part of those 313, right? Yep. Many people believe that those 313 are only men, but we have narrations and a hadith that say, no, there are also women, right? Do you know how many? No. There are 313, the, the females are a minimum of 50, 
we have different variations of ahadith, but a minimum of 50 of those 313 are women. So our sister, our mum, they could also be part of those 313. It's just that you have to try and become very, very good in your religion, very good in handling situations, not getting angry or fighting. You have to be kind, you have to be generous with people, correct? Yep. We learned that Imams are the children of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Yes. Which most of them came from Imam Hussein, right? Family. Yes, the family tree of Imam Hussein. That's correct. Yes. And we also learned that we have one Imam who is living at the moment called Imam Mahdi. And we also learned, we learned so much today, and we also learned that there are 313 ultimate believers and followers of Imam Mahdi. We have to try to be part of those. You have to be try to be part of those. Thank you for sending in your question. And uh, if you have any other questions, do send it in. And anything else you wish to say? Thank you for watching. And ma salama. Ma salama. Ah, welcome back, guys. I wanted to ask you, Pip, um, because I haven't seen him for such a long time, I never asked, how is your Ramadan going? Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. well, it's, uh, it's going okay. Yeah. But, um, I do get thirsty, I have to admit. Oh, yeah, I do too. You're not do alone you? in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not alone? No, of course not. Okay, good. But no, I'm yeah. really enjoying it. Yeah, alhamdulillah, that's so cool. Uh, do you know in the evenings, what I enjoy the most yes. is when I go to the masjid yes. and just after we prayed salah, yes. everyone together yes. and everyone sits down to yes. eat their iftar. What? So, what? What? Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Everyone sits down yeah. in the evening yeah. after, after maghrib yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. eat. That's when we eat, yeah. Why why do you look so confused, Pip? So? Yeah. Why am I eating in the afternoon? Are you eating in the afternoon? Well, I would disappear if I didn't eat all day. <laughs> well, Pip, um, you see, when you become Baalik, or when you become yes. an adult, yes. when you fast, you can only break your fast after Maghrib. And Maghrib is in the evening when the sun has gone down. Of course. But when you're younger, Yes. You can you can keep half fast because it's a very good practice. Oh. Is that what you do, Pip? It must be. Yeah. Because as I say, yeah. I break my fast yeah. after Asr. Ah. How many times do you break your fast? Do you, well, yeah. I only break it once. Ah, and then you break it again in the evening? No. Oh. Because then I'm just eating, right? Oh, okay, okay. So you do it half the day? I oh. think so, yeah. Oh, that's Because so nice. I fast mm -hmm. from Fajr yeah. to Asr. Ah, oh, that's awesome. That's really, really good. And you know, yes. Allah will be so pleased with us yes. because how d is it difficult during those hours whilst fasting? Very. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so alarmed because oh. I was thinking, yeah. how will I do a whole day? Oh, well, Pip, you know, Allah will give us strength. And, and I'm sure you'll be, by the time you grow up, you'll be really, really strong. And you'll be able to keep the whole fast for the whole day. Inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Well, maybe yeah. if I keep practicing, yeah. keep doing half fast, yeah. then I will be ready for the full fast yeah exactly and if you guys at home want to find out more about pip's fast then you can buy his book yes which is coming very very soon isn't it pip very very soon how exciting is that for you i'm really excited oh you look so adorable oh thank you oh but pip yes. you know another thing that's really really important to do and during the holy month of Ramadan is to recite Qur'an. Oh. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe we could recite some together right now. I would love that. Yeah? Yes. Well, well we prepared uh, a little lesson on learning the Qur'an. Okay. Okay? It's now, it's now time 
to let's learn Quran. Let's learn Quran. Surah Al Falaq. Bism. Allah. Ar Rahman. Ar Rahim. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق من شر ما خلق و من شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد صدق الله العلي العظيم Ah, oh, subhanallah, so beautiful, isn't it, Pip? So beautiful! I have another question for you, Pip. You know how we were talking about the imams? Yes. And I was just thinking, do you have a favorite imam, Pip? Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I think yeah. I like all the imams, uh -huh. but I really like yeah. Imam Sayyid al Abidin. Oh, well, that is so beautiful. And you know, <laughs> Imam Zain al Abidin, -Islam, he gave us a book of supplications called Sahif al Sajadiyya. And, and that reminds me, yes. in that book, there's yes. so many duas to ask for forgiveness, and they're so beautiful. That is true. Uh huh. Shall I, shall I teach you some of them? Oh, please, but yeah. one thing. Yeah. Can you try and make it one which I can actually remember? <laughs> so not too long. Okay, okay? well, I'll, tr I'll try because some of them can be quite long, but they are so beautiful. Please. There is this one very short dua. Okay. It goes. And do you want to repeat after me? I will try. Okay, okay. So I'll say it word by word. Okay. Rabbi. Rabbi. Inni. Inni. Zalamtu. Zalamtu Nafsi Nafsi Faghfirli Faghfirli Innahu Innahu La yaghfirud La yaghfirud Dhunuba Dhunuba Illa anta Illa anta Yes, I sent. Well done, Pip. Subhanallah. Uh -huh. What does it mean? Oh, that's a brilliant question. Um, it means, Oh Allah, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. There is no one except you who can protect me from the bad things that might happen. Wow. Yeah. Can we say it together? Yeah. Because I want to learn it off by heart. Okay. So okay. then I can ask Allah for say... forgiveness this ah. evening. Oh, that's so beautiful. Shall we say it in English? Please. Okay, so we say it together, Oh Allah. Oh Allah. I have wronged myself. I have wronged myself. So forgive me. So forgive me. There is no one except you. There is no one except you. Who can protect me. Who can protect me. From the bad things that might happen. From the bad things that might happen happen ah oh, well done Pip. you know it's so beautiful because allah really really loves it when someone turns to him and asks him for forgiveness because it just shows how beautiful your heart is ah oh, mm -hmm. subhanallah 
You have a beautiful heart too. Oh, thank you, Pip. That's very kind of you. Even though I can't see it. <laughs> I can see yours. Where? Uh, just, just on your chest. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be hidden behind the table, but I can see it. Well, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The main thing is I can feel your heart. Oh, oh, Pip. Yes. It's actually now time for another episode of I Look I See. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall we join Ibn Al Haytham with his magical telescope? Oh, his magical telescope! I love his telescope. Ah, so exciting. Okay, cool. Over to you, Ibn Al Haytham. Oh my! God truly is great, isn't he? <laughs> oh, assalamu alaikum and welcome, my explorer friends. I'm Ibn Haytham, and this is my marvelous telescope. It's special because it goes back in time, you see, and can visit any place you can think of. <laughs> I sit here, night after night, admiring Allah's wonderful creation. Oh, what's that sound? Come, let's take a look and see. Subhanallah! Oh, it's the wonderful and big-tastic world of the buffaloes! Buffalo are large members of the Bovidae family. There are two types of buffalo, the African or Cape buffalo and the Asian water buffalo. They are dark grey or black animals usually that look a lot like bulls. Buffaloes get mixed up with bison. Just look at it. This buffalo really does look like a bison or even a yak. And gosh, it's so hairy. A bit like my uncle. <laughs> even early American settlers called bison buffalo because the animals look the same, you see. But while bison are also bovines, they're not really the same. Bovines include domestic cattle, oxen, yaks, four-horned antelopes, bongos and kudos. Domesticated cattle means they have been especially trained to work for people. Water buffalo live in the tropical and subtropical forests of Asia. This is a very good name for them, for they spend most of their time in water. Their hooves are extra wide and stop them from sinking into the mud at the bottom of the ponds, swamps and rivers. Very clever indeed. The African buffalo is never far from water. They can live in grasslands, savannas, swamps, lowland floodplains, mixed forest and glades, but they never roam farther than 12 miles, that's 20 kilometers from a body of water. Good job their hooves are wide. Look at how long they are taking to drink water. They must be very thirsty. Instead of spending their days taking a swim, they lie under trees to keep cool while they nap. At night, they like to graze in the cool air, you see. The water buffalo is the largest bovine. It's eight to nine feet from head to rump, with its tail adding an extra two to three feet in length. They weigh a massive 700 to 1,200 kilograms, would you believe? <laughs> I know, that's a lot. The African buffalo is slightly smaller, but they are still quite impressive in size. They are about four to five feet long from head to hoof and weigh approximately 425 to 870 kilograms. 
chomp, chomp, chomp. <laughs> he looks like he's enjoying his meal, <laughs> even if it only is grass. <laughs> Buffalo are herbivores, you see, which means they only eat plants. Their favorite foods are grass and herbs, but water buffalo will also eat water plants too, you see. Both African and Asian buffalo will eat shrubs and trees when they can't find grass or herbs to eat. Without fresh green feed, buffaloes will have a very difficult time trying to survive though. You see, grass is the main part of the savannah buffalo's diet, but at different times of the year, they do eat other plants and vegetation. Buffaloes spend more time feeding at night than during the day though, would you believe? And buffalo are also social animals and live in groups called herds. Here are some now, <laughs> going for a walk together, you know, like through the park with your family, and uh, I wonder where they're off to though. <laughs> oh, this little buffalo is really thirsty. I bet he likes drinking all his mum's tasty milk. <laughs> buffalo, like most mammals, have their babies when they are young themselves, usually at the age of four or five. Their babies are called calves. Usually, they have one calf at a time and the female will carry the calf in her tummy for 9 to 11 months before giving birth. Once the calf is born, a water buffalo will stay with its mother for around, around three years, you see. Because water buffalo herds are split into males and females, a herd is a group of animals that stick together. I suppose you could call our families herds. <laughs> the mummy herds have up to 30 females and their children, all living together. Male herds have up to 10 members, but the African buffalo herds are mostly mixed up with male and female buffalo. They do have a few all-male herds, but these usually only have old male buffalo in them. <laughs> An African herd often has more than a thousand members. That's a pretty big family, I know. Imagine how crowded a birthday party would get with that many buffalo being invited. <laughs> <sighs> Only two came to mind. Anyway, and a part of this family is the bison, of course. And you could say they're cousins of buffalo in a way. But they live in North America, you see, not Africa. <laughs> What's this bison doing? Maybe he's getting ready for a nap. Around 20 to 30 million bison once lived on the North American landscape, you know, from the Appalachians to the Rockies, from the Gulf Coast to Alaska. But sadly, the places they live called their natural habitat have slowly been lost because of people not caring about them. Today, about 500,000 bison live across North America. However, most of these are not pure wild bison. Instead, they're a mix of different animals. Bison are fearsome creatures though, and they have these great big horns, which means that they get in a fight or two. <laughs> you should watch out. <laughs> Look at these two bison. They're really going for it. I wonder, what are they arguing about? Hmm. It looks like a bad fight. Their bodies are so strong too, aren't they? Mm. Known for moving great distances, bison move continuously as they eat. I know, we would get indigestion, but the females or cows leave family groups. Bulls remain on their own or in small groups for most of the year, but rejoin the group during mating season. Bison are very well suited to the extreme weather conditions of the Great Plains, from the summer heat to winter cold and blizzards. In winter, bison can dig through deep snow with their heads to reach the plants below. Now how cool is that? <laughs> oh, subhanallah. Buffaloes and bisons are huge, but kind of nice too. <laughs> Allah created this gorgeous world and everything in it. And it's been said that it's impossible to see the whole world in our lifetime. But it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. <laughs>
I'm going to search for more and more of Allah's wonderful creations in this universe. So until next time, my explorer friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, Pip, I learned so much about buffaloes. I love Ibn al Aytham. Oh, he knows you... so much stuff. I know, right? Pip, what is your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Yeah. Hmm, that's a difficult one. I agree. Hmm, I think it would have to be yeah. cats. Oh, cats? Yes. Oh, you don't have to travel far to see cats, Pip. That's really cool. Well, that depends. Uh huh. Depends what type of cats. Oh, what type of cats are we talking about? Big cats. Really, really big cats. Yeah. Not baby cats. No. Okay. Well, I do like baby cats as well. Yeah. Kittens are cute. Aww. But I like tigers and uh -huh. lions and wow. cheetahs and all the big cats. Oh, wow. That is cool. They can be dangerous too. True. Yeah. But they are very pretty too. Oh, that's true. You know, once I was in a safari yeah. and I saw a cheetah and he could run so fast. Like Usain Bolt. Yeah, even faster than him. Faster than Usain Bolt? Yeah. That's too fast. <laughs> Is it too fast? You can't keep up, can you? I wish I could run like that. <laughs> Do you know, what I can't keep up with is a calendar. Shall we check what it has for us today? That was a clever segue. <laughs> <laughs> so we have, oh, oh, this is interesting. Um, I think it smells really, really good. Hmm. Uh, I call it atar. Well, that's what my mum calls it. But atar? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a kind of perfume that we put. And normally, every Friday, I always put this. Oh, I think we monsters call it antar. Really? Yeah. Aww. Probably the, because yeah. we have problem pronouncing. Oh, and you're a monster. And we're monsters. <laughs> <laughs> There's a quote on here. Shall I read it out to you, Pip? Please. Okay, it says, A bad deed which you regret in your heart is 1,000 times better than the good deed that makes you feel proud. Oh, wow. Mm. So, so does that mean that if I do something really, really good and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm so awesome because I just prayed Salat al-Layl and that I'm so much better than you. Is that that's like 1000 times less better than if I was to do something bad? Like if I if I maybe locked you in a cupboard and then I felt really bad about it, that's 1000 times better than doing something good and feeling proud. So, yeah, what you're saying? Yeah is let me get this correct yeah i should feel yeah much better uh-huh that yeah i now feel bad yeah i lock my friend uh -huh. in the shed yeah then when i bragged about doing half a fast oh, exactly spot on pip very very well done i understand uh-huh but you know unfortunately it's now time um for us to go perhaps <gasps> Perhaps we could go and prepare some iftar for tonight, Pip. Oh, I would love that. Sounds great. I'll see you guys again on Wednesday. Have, have a lovely weekday. Assalamu alaikum. Take care. Bye-bye. See you.